Okay, so this is a little demo inspired by VisualRuby.net. They have a video there where they create a coin flip app. And it's a slick little tool set. We're going to do the same thing with Rebel. Um, to get uh, Rebel, go to rebel.com, click on the downloads, uh, select the view download, and download the right one for your operating system. You can see the one for Windows is about 8 tenths of a meg. The others are about half a meg. There it is, it's downloaded. And uh, when you run it, um, by default, it shows you a, a view top. Um, and uh, you can, uh, this is what you normally see, you can click on console to get to the Rebel interpreter console, type in code. Um, you can also um, click on the user menu and unselect this open desktop on startup option. I do that with every new install of Rebel just to make sure I don't have to click on the console every time. Um, that way when I run Rebel it comes right up to this console. And uh, to begin typing code, here we'll use the built-in Rebel um, editor. Uh, type in editor none. You can do this in any you know, notepad or uh, Notepad++, or I use Metapad in Windows, but the built-in editor is good. I've made some changes here so that uh, I have other options available, like undo. Um, but this lets you type in code, and for any rebel code, you start with the rebel header. It's the word rebel with two square brackets. Uh, and the first thing we're going to do is download an image and assign a value to that downloaded image. We're going to create um, a variable, variable label called h, uh, and assign that to this image loaded from um, website rebel.com forward slash heads dot png and uh, in rebel the little colon symbol is what we use to assign values to anything um, so I'm going to do the same thing with uh, the tails I'm going to create a variable t label t um, and assign it to that uh, tails dot png downloaded you can do the same thing here but assign it to a uh, a file name in Rebel, the files are labeled by the percent symbol. Um, but in this case, so we don't have to copy files, we can just load it directly from the web. And in this program, we're going to use some randomly generated values. So we're going to seed the random generator with the current time, that way, it gives us some real random values. Let's use the random function with the seed, uh, the seed refinement and uh, use the current time to see it. And to create a GUI, we type view layout and square brackets. Inside the square brackets, you type the words that refer to any GUI widgets. Um, first thing we're going to put in is an image. And in that image widget, we're going to start out with the uh, heads image, which is referred to by letter H. We're also going to label this entire GUI G. And I'm going to label that image I, so we can refer to each of those things later. And I'm going to create a field and label it uh, F. This is a text entry field. And then we're going to put a button in and put the word flip on that for coin flip. Um, another little set of brackets. Uh, this little set of brackets is the action block that's going to be run anytime the button is clicked. So the first action we want to have performed when the button is clicked is uh, we want to set the field text. So field is labeled F. We want to set the text of that F field. Use the colon to set that to um, a random um, a random word out of this list. Uh, first word will be heads. Next word will be tails. And uh, random uh, will take this list, the random function will take that list and create a random uh, list from that. And we're just going to take the first word from that list. So it will give us a random word from either of those two words and set the field text to it. And then we'll use the either evaluation, which is like a if else evaluation in other languages. Um, if that f text is equal to heads, then we'll set the image value of the i widget, so that image widget up here, we're going to set it to the heads image, the h image. Otherwise, we'll set the i image to the t value that we've loaded up there, that t image that we've loaded. And in Rebel, anytime you make any changes to a GUI, you need to use the show function to update it, and we labeled this GUI G, so we're 
updating the GUI. And actually, that's, uh, that's all we need for the program is done. Um, we'll call this coin flip. Dot R and you press F5 on your keyboard in the Rebel Editor and it'll run. And you get the that download of the image images. And then you can see there's a heads image. And click the flip button. It uh, randomly flips between heads and tails and changes the image for each word. It says heads, it's heads image, tails, it's tails image. And we save that to the file coinflip.r. What I'm going to do is uh, write that on my. Uh, in my rebel setup I have a little variable called G that I use to refer to my uh, my website FTP information and so I'm just going to join that with the coin flip file so I'm going to write to my website the coin flip file R, uh, whatever is read from that local file coin flip R a second here it's writing it to the website and if you see uh, go to rebel.com and coin flip you can see that that's been uploaded just wrote that to the website give it a second for the browser to find its way there we go and we can actually do that if we want to do wanna execute that file we can type in the URL and it now is taking that code from the website and running it. So that's the entire process. We've um, downloaded Rebel, edited it in the built-in editor, uploaded it using Rebel's built-in ability to write to FTP protocol, and uh, then we've executed that file not only locally but also directly on the uh, website. If we want to do it locally, we can just do the local coin flip file like this. Local coin flip there we go. And that's the entire process.